Hi, and thank you for watching this Finance with Excel video. The purpose of this video is to teach you the functionality of pivot tables in Excel. One of the most powerful tools that Excel has is pivot tables. And one way to teach pivot tables in a useful way is to build a workbook in um, so I, in a lot of finance situations, like if we're trying to value like an IPO or something like that, then we would want to compare the particular ratios of companies that are currently uh, listed with the company that we currently have. And so one way to do that, and it's a very simple way that I show my students, is is to calculate um, the uh, the market cap divided by EBITDA ratio. And this is just basically a a metric for how um, how many dollars of share val sh how many dollars of shareholder wealth are created by every one dollar of profits basically one dollar of earnings and so what I did and I will and I've uploaded this web or this workbook um, on the on uh, along with this video is I just went and I just downloaded for, a, for maybe five years um, the the entire uh, CompuStat database uh, with SIC codes. So you can say, you know, my my firm is going to end up being listed in SIC code number whatever. And so you say, well, what uh, what is the uh, market cap to EBITDA ratio of firms in that uh, in that um, in that year? So uh, what I'm going to do first. So I've got this data, but I need to be able to clean this data. So one thing to do is I can come uh, click up here and I just click on this filter button. So now, if we go to currency code, we don't want anything that says Canadian dollar or blanks. We only want U.S. dollar denominated um, share, uh, currencies. Um, next, I look at the shares, and then I want to make sure that uh, I, um, if it only if they have zero shares, then obviously they're not. Um, uh, then there's an error of some sort, or if the share, the number of shares are blank. And so then I just click OK, and then I come here to EBITDA. And I click, um, and I do the same thing. Uh, we want to, if it's missing, it's EBITDA. Then it's not really useful for our analysis. Now here we want to check. We want to make sure that stock, the stock price isn't missing or that it's not negative. So apparently we have no um, negative stock prices, but we do have some that are missing stock prices. So we want to deselect those. And anything that's missing an SIC code, which we don't have any that are, um, this is the data that we want. So what I'm going to do. And a, way, a good way to highlight large um, contiguous pieces of data is I just um, put my cursor in the top left hand thing, I hit shift, uh, control shift over, control shift down, and it will highlight the whole thing. Now I'm going to copy all of these, and you see it's only copying the data that we have selected, and I'm just going to move to a new tab, and I'm going to paste the data. And uh, make currency code a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to calculate market cap. So market cap. And um, market cap is just going to simply be the stock price multiplied by the number of shares outstanding. And this is the market cap of this of these particular firms in, uh, in millions. And next thing that we're going to do is we're now going to calculate the market cap market to EBITDA ratio. Make that a little wider. And the market cap to EBITDA ratio is just equal to the market cap divided by the EBITDA. And so then we've calculated the, the ratio. So we can see here um, that six uh, every one dollar of EBITDA generates in, for this particular firm in 2009 six dollars of shareholder value. And so then we just drag, we just double click on that formula, and it drags it all the way to the bottom. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna format this just a little bit. So I'm gonna highlight this row, and I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of the extra decimals. And then market cap should be dollars, and these are in millions, and EBIT does also in millions, and stock price. There we go. And so I'm just just a little bit of formatting. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is now we want to create a pivot table because we want to calculate the average. Um, oh, no, that's not what we're going to do next. 
So the next thing that I'm going to do is right here I've got the SIC code. So I want to move the SIC code to the beginning. So I'm going to go, if I highlight this entire column, and one way to highlight an entire column is to just put in that column and then hit control space bar. And if I highlight that entire column, then I hit control shift plus, it'll put a column in front of it. So now I'm just going to highlight this column, hit control X, and then I'm going to move it over here. So I've just moved the SIC code, now I'll just get rid of that column. Now I'm, I'm uh, going to put another column right here, and I'm going to call this industry. And as I've noticed here on this tab right here, I've got a lookup table for uh, all the SIC codes and what the name of that particular um, SIC code. So we'll, we'll go ahead and add that in. So I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP uh, SIC code, and then go to my lookup table highlight all of those, make sure you anchor, um, so you just hit F4 and then hit 2 and then false. Okay, so we are, we can now see that, you know, what this particular firm was in machinery, equipment, and supplies. So now what we want to do is we want to calculate the average market to EBITDA ratio for each um, for each industry and each year, and a very simple way to do this is I just uh, click anywhere in in this uh, data, and then I just go click go up here to insert, and then I go insert pivot table, and it'll say where do you want the pivot table? It automatically selects this range, but if that range is not what you want, then you could manually change it here, and then it says where do you want to put it? I'm going to put it on a new workbook, and then it comes here. It says so now how do we build our um, how do we build our pivot table? So this over here is the pivot table box that shows us how to build it, gives us all of the fields that we have right here, and, um, and then it gives us the rows and the columns and the values. So the next, so what we were going to do now is I'm just going to build the thing. So let's put the SIC code as a row. So now it's listed on the rows all the different SIC codes. and. Uh, then the, what I'm going to do is I will, underneath that I'm going to put the year. So now we can see this is going to give me SIC code 100 for all the years that we have data for. Um, now I'm going to say, well, what do we want in this? Uh, we want to what? Well, let's take. Let's say. Let's just say. Well, what is the average market cap? So notice when I initially put it in, it, its default is sum. We don't want sum. So to change it, I just click on it. Click value field settings and then I just go to average. So this is now calculating the average in millions of market caps for firms in that particular industry and that particular year. Now we want the ratio, so I'm just going to drag the ratio down here and see now it's giving it to us in count. Well, as well, I just have to change this. We want to change this to average. And uh, once again, we can see that the average um, EBITDA ratio and we can highlight this and get rid of the decimals, is uh, it, for each of these. So this right, this top column gives us overall, and this breaks it down for each of the years. Now the last thing is I want to know how many different industries are in that particular um, SIC code and year in our observations. So next thing I do is I can just grab any one of these, and also I'll just grab a market cap, and I'll put it back in, and then I'll just do value field settings count. And so now it says, um, you know, we can see that for this particular year there were four, um, there were four firms in this particular industry. Uh, in 2013, they had an average market cap of that and an average um, EBITDA ratio of that. And so we can use this as kind of a, 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 a way to teach ratios and also a way to teach um, that, to teach uh, pivot tables. Um, the last thing that I will show you with here is now suppose that I want to add a filter. So now we come over here um, to this report filter, and uh, it says we, let's say we only want uh, only want years and um, years and SIC combinations where there are at least five firms, so that we get a, a decent enough sample size. Well, one way to do that is so in order to do that, we actually have to have a field up here that says n or number, and so. I'm going to go back to my data page right here, and I'm going to go number. And now I'm going to introduce you to a new uh, an Excel formula. It's called count ifs. 
So what this is saying is it's just going to say, I'm just going to count the number of observations that meet a particular criteria. So what we want is we want to say the number of observations that are in SIC code for, in this example, uh, 5080 and in year 2009. So it says criteria range 1. Criteria range 1 is just going to be um, this column. And then criteria 1 is just going to be this particular cell. And so then it's just going to go through um, for each one of these observations as I drag the formula down and it'll go through the entire column and find out and count the total number of observations that match that criteria. Next we come over to criteria 2 in our, in our workbook and it says, and that's just going to be the year. So let's just highlight this. One way to do it is, is I just click on the cell and to select a whole range is I just do control shift down and it selects all the data in that column and then I hit F4 and that anchors there and then I want to just select that particular year and I don't need to anchor it. So I hit enter and we can see that it, for this particular there's only one um, firm year in that uh, particular combination but we go down and we can see for example in this in this one there are 60 different firms that are in pharmaceutical preparations in 2013. So we get large sample size and we can count that. Now that we've created this field, uh, let's go back to our pivot table and then we go up to options and we go to change data source and it says, well, this is what you currently have, what do you actually want? Well, I just want this to come over to column J. So I mean, I could go and, and select it or I can just type in J and it uh, will select all of our data. Now we see number drops in here. So now I'm going to just put number in the report filter and we see that it, number shows up right here. And so what I can do is I can click on this and I go select multiple items. Now it's selecting everything and I don't want to see any for any observation that has um, fewer than five firms in it. And so I just click OK and it gets rid of the observations that don't meet that criteria. And last thing I can do is I can, uh, I'm just going to drag this industry right here and I just put it underneath so we can see SIC code 100 is agriculture production crops. Um, this is the number of firms that were in that particular year, particular range, and um, and then we can see what the average market to EBITDA ratio was and the market cap for each of these firms. So this is a useful workbook. Um, you can use it to help teach your students like ratio analysis and how to calculate ratios from large um, pieces of data. Um, and this data I just got from Words um, from CompuStat and I just downloaded uh, this data and um, that's this workbook. Thank you for watching.